Hi, I'm Mike Christiansen, Director of Curriculum at Consonus Music, welcoming you to this webinar entitled Teaching the New Common Arts Core for Classroom Guitar. I'm going to be talking about the strand of the new National Core Music Standards that deals with guitar and other harmonizing instruments. As well as talking about the new standards, I'll be showing how the Consonus blended learning method for classroom guitar that I've authored can be applied and used as a curriculum that is compliant with the national standards. I'll also talk about how you can create a curriculum that is integrated with the national standards regardless of the method you're using. The new standards focus on conceptual understanding and provide a framework for developing musical literacy and the ability to communicate, convey ideas, and understand how others convey their ideas through music. So the goal reaches beyond the skills required for reading, performing, and writing music, but it doesn't downplay learning the skills necessary for students to take their music literacy to a higher level. The responsibility of the guitar teacher is to create curriculum that is integrated with the national standards and involves the students with the development of the curriculum. The three artistic processes presented in the core are creating, performing, and responding. Creating is the writing of the music and also includes improvisation. Responding is the consumer role and performing is, well, performing. As well as being involved in creating and performing music, the students should become educated consumers. Within each process, the core breaks down into various components. For example, in the area of creating, the steps include imagine, get the ideas to create the music, plan and make, in other words, know how to construct or develop those ideas, evaluate and refine, listen and review, and then present or unveil the product. Guitar instruction can be implemented using each of the processes suggested in the core. Most of the material in guitar methods, including the consonus method, focus on developing skills such as chord knowledge, accompaniment patterns, and note reading. There are also other components that address many of the processes in the core. For example, in the creating process of the core, students are encouraged to compose and create melodies and harmonize accompaniments. The guitar, with its innate ability to be an accompaniment instrument, as well as a solo instrument, makes it doubly suited to use in composition. Besides being able to play single note and harmonize melodies on the guitar, the guitar is the ideal instrument for learning to write and understand chord progressions. I would encourage your students to compose from the beginning of their musical experience. Even if they only know a few chords, they can begin writing their own chord progressions using basic chords. A bit later, I'll talk about how the Consonus Method addresses composition. To enable students to write simple melodies, students are taught to read standard notation and tablature. In the Consonus Method, students are taught to read tablature first and then quickly move on to reading standard notation. The tablature does not replace standard notation, but provides a springboard for learning the placement of the notes in standard notation. This same approach could be adopted regardless of the method that you're using. It's important to note that when having students learn to read tablature, the tablature should contain stems or circled numbers to indicate the time values. This will allow the students to transfer their knowledge of rhythms into standard notation. A component in the creating process is improvisation. I feel that the Consonus Method presents a simple, unique approach to learning improvisation that I'll discuss in a few minutes. Because the Consonus Method can be used as a blended learning course, combining online material with book-based material in the classroom, it's possible for the students to augment their learning by listening to the teacher uh, or teacher-selected recordings and establish educated responses as to the quality of what they're hearing. At Consonus, we believe in the intent of the core standards in emphasizing that music literacy is more than skill development and that while the skills are essential, students need to be able to communicate with their music. The performance process is the one which most educators are most familiar. The core notes that performance begins with selecting the literature to be performed. The analyzing step given in the core involves understanding the music. After analyzing the music, 
we interpret it or we give it our take. Next, we practice or rehearse it to do the refining, and then we present it. A new difference in the core is that the students are asked to be involved in carrying out these steps rather than having the teacher always do this. However, the students need to be trained in how to be involved with the selection and the performance processes. The advantage of using video-assisted instruction is that through the ability to review, students can more easily learn the requirements necessary for participation extending beyond the performance. By listening to available online recordings and videos, students can hear and see what the final product should be. A cornerstone of the blended learning method is supplementing skills instruction with audio recordings, allowing the students to hear the music executed correctly. This is essential for students to develop their sense of time, their execution abilities, and their interpretive skills. Regardless of the method being used, students can be taught on how to be involved with the selection and the rehearsal. At Consonus, we strongly believe that playing guitar ensemble literature is essential to quality guitar education and is an essential factor with the curriculum being compliant with many of the components in the core music standards. Our method has ensemble literature built into the curriculum with scores and individual parts in the workbooks and integrated online recordings. With the benefit of the online Consonus material, students can hear and practice with the ensemble literature. With the students being able to hear the entire ensemble while practicing, interpretation of the music is more obvious, and self-motivation is created from the positive experience of being part of the overall sound created by the group. Again, regardless of the book being used, guitar ensembles need to be a feature of the guitar curriculum. Ensemble literature is available from many sources. Another consideration in the performance process is having the students learn what music and type of performance and concert behavior is appropriate for a particular event or a venue. For example, how would one select and perform background music as opposed to a concert performance? Another example would be having the students learn that it's appropriate in a jazz concert to applaud after the solos, whereas in a classical concert, it's more appropriate to applaud only at the end. Students need to learn not only to be effective performers, but also be effective audience members. Besides training students to play guitar, we at Consonus feel an obligation to teach students to be consumers and aficionados of music. Because after all, the quality of their selections of music will have an impact on the quality of the musicians that they become. Consumers make choices. They interpret and evaluate what they hear. Those who are musically literate can analyze and better appreciate the music. When the consumer evaluates the music, it often determines whether or not they want to repeat the experience. Another process that is mentioned in the core standards is connecting. Although it might not be considered a separate process, connecting with the community and the audience is an essential component of being musically literate. What better instrument to connect with the community and audiences than the guitar? With its inherent popularity, related repertoire, and versatility, it's not only the perfect tool to connect the musician with the audience, but musicians with each other, and even connect generations. Music can be used to make connections with other academic disciplines. For example, in the guitar class, students could learn to play a blues progression or blues progressions and make the connection between music and the art of writing by learning to write their own blues lyrics. They could also learn about the historical significance blues played in shaping jazz and pop styles and the origin of its call and response form in the African music. Math and music have obvious connections. As well as connecting music with other disciplines, the guitar with its ability to be used as an accompaniment instrument and a solo instrument could be used to connect areas within the discipline of music. For example, the guitar ensemble could accompany the choir, or a guitarist or a guitar ensemble could accompany a band or orchestra instrumentalists. Music has the ability to connect cultures. Each culture has its own unique musical style that requires unique skills and techniques that students can be taught as part of the curriculum. The guitar is unique 
and that it has a place in so many different types of world music. In our courseware, we've intentionally incorporated music styles such as classical, flamenco, blues, jazz, country, reggae, and even klezmer in our solo and ensemble repertoire. Within each component of the core, there are proficiency levels defined. The novice is the approximate equivalent of 5th and 6th grade level. Intermediate is roughly 7th and 8th grade. Proficient is first year high school. Accomplished is later years in high school. And advanced is college level. In each level, the suggestions get progressively more advanced and involved. It's crucial the guitar educator realizes that all the skills required to play the instrument have to be presented in sequence so that each skill is an outgrowth of a previously learned skill. You wouldn't show a student how to play a syncopated strum pattern without first knowing how to do a basic strum pattern containing one up strum. Another example might be that you would not show a student how to play bar chords without a firm grasp of playing open position chords. The same concept of sequential presentation is applicable to every skill. Whatever curriculum you create or adopt needs to be sequentially conceived. At this point, I'd like to talk about two essential creative skills to the new core, improvisation and composition. Even if you have expertise in these areas, designing an effective approach to teaching them in your guitar class can present a challenge. I feel that the Consonus Method presents a very unique approach to teaching improvisation. I've employed a method that I've developed and used successfully with many middle school and high school students. What I'd like to do is play a portion of the mini course that's available for you with your teacher's login to the Consonus Online Learning site. It's in the sidebar under the Professional Development tabs and includes a handout that you can download, print, and use in your class. If you don't have a free teacher's login, I'll put up a link that will allow you to sign up. Here's the video. Now, <clears throat> the next step is learning how to locate some of the chord tones because really when you play the scale, some of the notes are uh, better than others. Uh, they all work, but some of them are better than others. And the ones that are better than others we'll call the chord tones. Those are notes that are in the chord. Now, if you look here at uh, example number three, there are two example number threes here because uh, the one on the bottom there shows you the application of uh, the uh, chord tones that are on the top. But if you look at the top there, you're going to be able to locate the chord tones. So there are the chord tones for the E7, A7, and B7. The one on the left there is an E7 chord. Now that might look like there's more dots than you see in the E7, but I'm actually using two E7s, the E7 with two fingers and the E7 with four fingers. So the solid dots show you the chord tones, and the other circles there with the solid dots are the E minor pentatonic scale. So it's important to see the chord overlaid over top of the scale. Now we're going to be using this for the pentatonic, but you can also use it with, for more advanced scales. You could use it for chords with the harmonic minor or altered scales or, or any of the scales really. Now the one in the middle shows you the A7. There again, you might see, see those uh, solid dots on the open strings there. That's because I'm using two different A7s. The one with a, pink, a finger barred over three strings and then the other one with just two fingers. And then if you look at the diagram on the right, you see a B7 chord. Now that B7 chord, the solid dots are superimposed over top of that E minor pentatonic scale. So those are going to be our golden notes when we're on a B7 chord. We want to be on one of those notes. All right. Now if you look at the bottom down there, you're going to see a solo that contains one note in a measure. Now rather than think of the scale, we're going to just play one note per measure. But the note we're playing is a note that's in the chord. It's a chord tone. So for the first four measures there, each note that I'm playing is a note that's in an E7. Then on the next line, when I go to the A7, I'm playing notes that are in the A7. And notice as I'm trying to keep the notes close to one another. I'm not playing one on, like on the first string and then jumping over to the fifth string. I'm trying to keep them a little bit tighter. And by doing that, I'm creating a nice little melody just by using chord tones. Okay, so in example number three, I'm going to play that for you so you can see what that would sound like. You can keep watching it there. Also, notice that I've written it in tablature. Now, it's important uh, <clears throat> that you see the chord tones from the diagram, so I've written them in tablature. You could write it in standard notation also. It's good to know what the notes are. 
But the guitar is a great instrument to see chord tones because when we play an E7 chord, we can actually see the notes that are in the E7 chord. When I play an A7, you can see the notes that are in say A7. You don't have to worry about it being the root third and fifth and the flat seventh. You can just say, those are the notes that are gonna sound good. When I play a B7, those are the notes that are gonna sound good. It's the same thing if I played a, if I was playing an A13 flat nine. The same thing. I could say that's going to be a good note, that's going to be a good note, that's good, that's good, because they're all chord tones. Okay, so let's go back to the blues in the key of E, just playing one note per measure. This is the example number three that's on the bottom, and I'm going to be playing the notes that are written in each measure, the chord tone for the measure. One, two, three, four. Now, second open. Next line. So there, I was playing just chord tones. I'm, I'm just playing uh, one note per measure, but it's causing me to focus on uh, the chord tones. Now, just playing the chord tones, it, it sounds a little bit boring that way, but now I want some sample rhythms. And now this would probably be a good time for me to tell you that everything you're going to see on the screen, when you go to the cmilearn.org and you register for the free evaluation course, we're gonna send you a packet that has everything that you're going to be seeing on the screen. So uh, you'll have all the music that we're gonna be talking about today. So playing one note per measure is fine, but it sounds maybe just a little bit cold and uh, we need some rhythms. We need some rhythm to go with it. So in example number four, take a look at some of these rhythms that I have written out. These are some common rhythms that you could use to get used to playing those chord tones and, and having them be a little bit more interesting. Rhythm number one is like this, one, two, and, one, two, and, and then you tie for three and four. Rhythm number two, one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, four. And I'm swinging the eighth note, so you play them even too. Example number three, or excuse me, rhythm number three, sounds like this, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four. Number four sounds like this. One, two, three, and four. Rest, two, three, and four. Now, there are all kinds of rhythms that could be used uh, to play these chord tones and, and use the scale. These are just some to get you started. But these will be good ones for your students to play. Now, rather than try to use all the rhythms, have your students go through and just play one chord tone per measure and one rhythm per measure, using the same rhythm over and over. Now in example number five, that's what I've done. So in example number five, you see that rhythm number one, that one, two, and, and then it's tied for three and four, in every measure. And I'm playing chord tones. I'm trying to keep the chord tones close to one another. Okay, so let's hear example number five. Two, three, four. So you can see that it gives it a little bit more interest when I'm using some of those other rhythms. Now what we want to do, we want to play a solo containing some of those rhythms, maybe more than one of those rhythms, combining some of the rhythms together, and maybe using more than one chord tone, maybe using two chord tones in the measure. Now in example number six, you're going to see me play a, a solo containing multiple rhythms, and I'm gonna use a couple of chord tones, and maybe one scale tone. I might throw a scale tone in there. Now the important thing is that I play the chord tone on beat one. And the rest of the time I can play some notes from the scale or another chord tone, but on beat number one, I want to be on that chord tone. So let's listen to number six. This again is a blues in the key of E. One, two, three, four.
When you log into the Consona site, you'll also be able to get the full improvisation course and also get the improvisation material as a full lesson as part of our Guitar Fundamentals Intermediate course. To accompany the element of improvisation, an added benefit that the Consonus Method provides is that because it is a blended learning program, the students can access online audio and video that accompany the lessons so they can review the skills they have been taught and use play-along tracks to practice their improvisation. To teach composition in the Consonus Method, I present a modified circle of fifths, sometimes referred to as a chord clock which allows the students to locate the chords in each key to use in playing by ear and composing chord progressions. To find the chords in a given key, locate the name of the key on the clock. Then take the chords on both sides of the key and the chords connected on the inside of the clock to those three chords. This will show you the six basic chords in the key. This is invaluable in learning to write and understand chord progressions. To find the chords in a given minor key, the process is similar. Locate the name of the given minor key on the clock, take the chords on both sides of the name of the key, and the chords connected to those three on the outside of the clock. The difference is that with the minor key, the chord just clockwise of the key has to be changed from a minor chord to a major chord, and it's often a seventh chord. After learning which chords go together in the keys, students can be taught to arrange the chords in a specific key alphabetically, beginning with the chord that has the name of the key. For example, the chords in the key of G would be, beginning with the G chord because that's the key, G, A minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor. Those are the chords in the key of G arranged alphabetically. You might also know that the seventh chord in the key would be F sharp diminished. The clock doesn't show that, and that can be dealt with in a later, seeing how the diminished chord is a bit of a freak anyway, and not used that often. At least not in the kind of music we'll be talking about. After the students arrange the chords of the key alphabetically, they can assign them Roman numerals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, using large Roman numerals for the major chords and small Roman numerals for the minor chords. Students should notice that in each key, the 1, 4, and 5 are major, while the 2, 3, and 6 are minor. Next, the students can be taught common progressions of chords, the 5 going to the 1, the 2 or the 4 chord going to the 5, the 6 chord usually going to the 2 or the 4, and the 3 chord going to the 6. While this series doesn't always happen in chord progressions, it's common and provides training wheels for students to write their own progressions. Students could also be taught that sometimes the two, the three, and the six chords are changed into major, and often seventh chords. They should be taught that if this takes place, the chord that follows that chord will be one counterclockwise of the changed chord. Students are actually learning how to play secondary dominance when they do this. It's a very common practice and it's easy to use. Accompaniment patterns for 4-4 or 3-4 can be used to play the original progressions that are created by the students. I want to talk about differentiated instruction, or what I call layered learning. As technology becomes more and more available in academic disciplines, the idea of providing customized instruction to students of varying abilities and skills is becoming a reality. This is particularly relevant to guitar. Guitar is unique in that it's more common on that instrument to have students of different skill and music literacy levels being taught in the same class. Because many students may be self-taught, learned from online videos, took private lessons, or just jammed with other guitarists, it's not uncommon to have a wide range of understanding and abilities in the same class. Realizing this, Consonance has provided supplements to each lesson so that teachers can access what we call layered learning materials. What it entails is the, availabil the availability of topic-related materials at different skill levels to supplement each lesson in the book. For example, if students are learning a simple fingering of a particular chord, more advanced fingerings of the same chord are available in PDF format for the teacher to print and give to the more advanced students in the class. Videos are also available at the Consonus site where all of the layered learning content is explained and demonstrated. If students are learning a basic scrum pattern for 4-4, 
material in PDF and video format is provided at the site for the teacher to give to the students who can handle learning more advanced strum patterns for 4-4. Students can play the same repertoire in class, but at individualized skill levels. Another example might be, while the beginning students are playing a piece in first position, the more advanced students can be playing the same music in an upper position. Layered learning content is available with each lesson. If you're using another method, you may want to develop your own layered learning materials for more experienced students. Realizing that some guitar instructors are uncomfortable teaching the skills required in a well-balanced curriculum that complies with the core music standards, and also realizing that some instructors have become the guitar instructor by default. That is, many are band or orchestra or choir teachers with very little formal training in guitar pedagogy. Consonus provides online pedagogy training. Workshops are also available upon request.